Welcome back to the Gnome Show, everyone. I am Joshua, Joshua, your humble host, and it is my duty, nay, my pleasure, to patrol through... Ugh, wow, can't talk in this one. Uh, it is my pleasure to trawl the briny depths of YouTube so that I may bring you the shinies. I cover short films of varying genres, video games, analog horror, and sci-fi, and anything else that I think is groovy. I hope you'll enjoy tonight's offerings. On with the show. Tonight I have for you um, two pieces of uh, film uh, from Fallout Lanius. Uh, and if you are a New Vegas player, uh, these will definitely tug at your heartstrings. Uh, and um, I don't know about closure, but definitely. I don't know. Let's see. Um, the first one up is called uh, For Carla and it's very short but uh, let's check it out if you're reading this then you know sorry wanted to make it back home to you the pension won't be much but it should help you and the baby get by want you to remarry when you meet the right person don't want you to have to be on your own not sure the right way to say how I feel about you think you know already though Always seemed like you knew what I meant. Maybe better than I did. Wish I was there with you now. There are things I couldn't tell you. Tried. Whatever you learn over time about my service in the NCR. Hope you can forgive me. Lastly, know you were against it. But if it's a girl, want her to be named after her mother. Know it's playing dirty to win the argument this way, but too bad. It's worth it, Craig. This is the letter that he had. Okay, and now... Whew, let's do this. For Carla. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Carla. Uh, Fallout New Vegas short story. Um, make sure you go and visit these guys and take a look at their stuff because they have good stuff. All right, let's go. Carla Boone was tired. She had been traveling for over a week and all she wanted to do was sleep. Everything hurt. Most is bindings around her wrists. They had walked the first few days until ancient old trucks had hauled her and a handful of other women the last leg of the journey to Cottonwood Cove. She knew exactly what was happening. She knew exactly what was happening, and she was too tired and sad to feel much about it anymore. She'd stopped crying on day three. There must have been close to 200 Legion soldiers in this camp and close to 50 slaves. The trucks had unloaded all kinds of people from all over the Mojave, and all of them had that hollow, empty look in their eyes she'd come to understand quickly. She hoped Craig was okay. She wished she could have told him she loved him, told him she was sorry. She wished they hadn't fought so much in the last few months. She wished for a lot of things and knew wishing did nothing, especially here. Carla looked up and noticed the beautiful blue of the sky. She'd spent so many days and nights in Novak looking out at that sky smoking a Big Boss cigarette and dreaming about New Vegas. She missed her friends and her parents. She missed the noise of the city and the clubs and the beautiful people. She had hated Novak. She'd hated Novak from the day she had arrived. She'd hated those toothless rednecks that lived there, that ugly, stupid dinosaur thing. And for a while, she'd hated Craig for dragging her there. Now, she'd do anything to go back. The legionaries had started to corral the slaves away from the trucks toward the center of the camp, where there was wooden platforms. They looked like gallows without nooses, but they were certain death anyway. It's worse because I know what's coming. They're going to sell us, Carla thought again. She almost laughed out loud at that, but didn't want to draw any unnecessary attention. She'd found the legionaries very cold but rarely abusive. Gotta protect the merchandise, I guess. Carla thought about the baby inside her for the first time that day, and then she did want to cry. 
How could this have happened? Did someone in that dog shit town hate me so much? Of course they did. You hated them too. At this point, did it really matter who sold you out? Was it Manny? That old cow puncher, Alice McBride? That no. nasty little crone, Jeannie Mae? Yes. They Fuck all you. hated me. And I Fuck hated you, them. Bitch. You got what you Standing deserve. here right now, it doesn't make any difference. The only thing I do know is that Craig would have already we got her for out, you. And whoever was responsible was as good as dust already. Yes. Yes, she is. She's she's they done. Were being moved closer to the auction area, and Carla could feel a small wave of panic move through the group. If there was anything she had learned in the last week, is that fear ebbs and flows. And the minute you think you can't feel it anymore, there's plenty more where that came from. There was some kind of leader, a big man with a stupid helmet barking orders at his men. He spoke in a clipped, bizarre way, where elements of his speech was littered with Latin, which made him sound uncanny and cartoonish. They were being split into groups by gender and age, and Carla was pushed into a pack of frightened women in their twenties. She didn't recognize any of them, but guessed they had been abducted and sold out from the various dust-choked towns they had used to call home to. Amongst the Legion soldiers, she could now see merchants and caravanners. She could only guess a lot of them were from Flagstaff, the home of Caesar's Legion. A lot of them were carrying chains and whips, and she guessed one of them would be her new owner soon. She looked at the closest Legion soldier and wondered what it would take Fuck for him to Legion. kill her. She knew they were fanatics, devout to their masters, and that harming the merchandise was a big no-no. She scanned the hills around them, she was too tired to race to one of those peaks and jump. She looked back at the soldier. None of them wore sidearms, and truth be told, she had no idea how to use a gun, let alone shoot herself with one. Pretty bleak stuff, she thought, and again stifled a laugh. At this point, what else could she do? She hoped that wherever Craig was, he was okay. She had no idea she would have fallen in love with a NCR sniper. She'd imagined she would have fallen in with one of the New Vegas families. Lived a life on pills and booze in a penthouse suite, not some dust bowl with an ugly dinosaur gift shop. But Craig was something special. She'd never really been able to say it, but she'd loved him the moment they'd met. He was razor sharp, kind and handsome, and she secretly loved his coldness, his lack of bullshit. So different to all the New Vegas boys she'd known. He was husband material, her mother would have said. If only we'd ended up somewhere else. If only I'd been more understanding. If only Craig had listened. He'll kill Legion soldiers until the day they kill him now. She realized. Which probably means he won't live long after this. The leader was now oh, no, he will. slaves. I'll make sure. Their attributes and price. Human beings reduced to product perks. He'd pull a slave onto the stage, and then the merchants would bark prices at him and fight amongst themselves for the slaves they wanted. Sometimes, they had to be pulled apart by legionaries, and then the auction would resume. Strong, able-bodied men sold first, followed by young women. Carla didn't really want to imagine if children were at these things too. A young girl in front of her started to sob, and Carla laid her hand on the girl's shoulder. She didn't bother to speak. What would she say? The girl was pulled onto the stage and sold in minutes. A fat, greasy merchant gently escorted her down and away from the sales area. Carla looked away. Before the centurion could pull her up, Carla stepped onto the stage willfully. She looked down into the faces of the legionnaires and merchants and felt nothing. The centurion began his pitch and Carla ignored it. She looked up into that beautiful, cruel blue sky, and then she saw it. A glint from the top of a ridge far away, so far away. You'd hardly see it if you didn't know what you were looking for. Carla didn't know much about guns, but she'd heard Craig talk about shooting for a long time. It was the glint of a sniper's scope. For the first time in over a week, she felt something akin to happiness. She looked down again into the mass of soldiers and slaves and merchants, and smiled. She placed her hand on her belly and looked back up into the direction of the glint and smiled again. She could hear angry voices around her, but she ignored it all. She looked far away into the glint and closed her eyes. 
In that instant, she pictured Craig's face. She imagined the family they would have created. She remembered, sometimes, how beautiful the Mojave looked at dawn, when the sun began to creep over the desert, when she'd watched the sunrise drinking coffee and listening to the little desert coyotes yip and bark at one another. She thought about Craig one last time, and then there was a distant sharp pop, and then nothing. Poor Carla. Like, subscribe, and share. I'll see you in the next one.